What's that? These are facts about the much polluted planet that we are living on. That sounds horrible. You have to do something about it, don't you? Yes, I already have a little tip that helps reduce air pollution. The idea consists of taking a cardboard plate and spreading petroleum jelly all over it. By the way, petroleum jelly is composed of carbon, hydrogen, sulfur, metals and some other matters that helps catch the pollutions in the air. Don't forget to drill two holes on it and hang it by a string in a high place. After a few days, you will observe that there is some black pollutions on the plate. At that point, consider your experiment successful. Interesting. But what if this was not enough? Then, our only option is to leave home, I mean Earth, and find another livable planet. You mean colonizing planets? Exactly. As you know, humans were born on Earth, but that doesn't mean we have to die on it. There are billions of planets, but finding the suitable one can be difficult. Fortunately, NASA has already begun the search, and uh, Kepler-440b is among the candidates. Before inviting a planet, we have to select people with extraordinary skills, because simply, we can't take 7 billion people. After choosing our elite, all nations have to work together, in order to build highly sophisticated spaceships, with advanced communication systems, so we can contact each other without ground control assistance. Moreover, we should find the perfect matter to build the spacecrafts, Research proved that the perfect future matters to build the spaceships are carbon structures and silica fibers. This venture may require more than one spaceship, so our main ship must be accompanied by other smaller, less advanced cargo ships. Launching these ships require very powerful engines, so maybe we can use the moon as a launch base where gravity's force is less than Earth's. Wait a minute, how will you deal with living in our space and without enough oxygen? As you know, the human body is not meant for living in space. The individuals that we are going to send will be trained for zero gravity situations. By the way, Valery Polyakov holds the record of nearly 438 and 18 hours spent in space. And for the oxygen issue, ISS system already uses a great te technique to generate oxygen aboard the station by splitting the atoms of water, H2O, and releasing oxygen to the cabin. The process is the same for hydrogen, which is then disposed of. Once we get to our planet, several questions arise. What do you mean? Didn't you accomplish our mission? No, you forgot that there is a chance of finding other forms of life, like aliens or microscopic organisms, and, and we don't know how our first encounter would be like. If our human instincts kick in, it might not go well, and we can do the same mistake that pushed us to leave our lovely home. But if everything goes well, we can evolve and adapt to the new environment as what panspermia and evolution theories came up with. Interesting. Can you give me some information about what has been done concerning such programs? Yes, there is uh, several missions like NASA's latest mission Insight, in which the Moroccan engineer Kamal Udreli did a great work as in the old successful missions Cassini and Opportunity. Hope you enjoyed watching this fruitful video. Uh, who knows, maybe one day we'll be a part of this very program. All respects, Salah.